Hey everybody, Madriverad here. Pokemon Fire Red with only one Kabuto was really weirdly hard by the end, but we've been using way too many rock types, so let's go in a totally other direction. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only one Mistrevis? Mistrevis is gonna be a weird one. Stats-wise, she isn't amazing and isn't awful. She doesn't really excel or fall behind too hard in anything. Her real weakness is that in Gen 2, she can hardly learn any attacking moves. Her only real attacking move until level 27 is Psy Wave, an inaccurate garbage move that does mostly random damage. And the only same type attack bonus move we can learn isn't until we beat the fourth gym. Our type coverage is going to be awful. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this Part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that I can win the run with enough time, but I might not have good enough type coverage to be able to beat Red. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Mistrevis. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Chikorita with Mistrevis so that we can do the whole run with it. I replaced Chikorita so that my rival would have Typhlosion. I figure that it's probably the hardest for us to fight. I name him Weird Ghastly, or Weird Gastle as it fits, because that's hilarious. So while I get to the first gym, let me show you how Psy Wave works. In Gen 2, it always does a random number of damage that will be between 1 damage and 1.5 times our level rounded down. So at level 5, Psywave will do 1 to 7 damage. It also has a 1 in 5 chance of missing, and is never super effective. I absolutely hate this move, and it will likely be our only attacking move until level 27, until we find one of the very few TMs that we can use. When I finally get to the Bellsprout Tower, you can really see just how annoying of a move Psywave is. Because of its low power points, low accuracy, and random damage, it's incredibly difficult to beat large numbers of Pokémon. I don't know if I could even beat the second gym leader with this considering Bugsy has three Pokémon, and I won't be doing much damage, but we'll have to wait and see. After running around and healing after every trainer until I beat Bellsprout Tower, we're ready for Falconer and his flying gym. But even with Psywave, it's not that bad. We have Confuse Ray now, so although Psywave is still super reliable, Falconer is a terrible trainer, so we still win. Pretty much any trainer at this point in the game can be really annoying because of how easy it is to run out of power points, and that I don't have the option to run away if I run out but I really do have to fight everything that I can if I'm gonna stand a chance at the upcoming gym. At level 18, I decided to try the bug gym again under the assumption that I'd lose, but that'd be worth trying. Metapod hit a few string shots and wasted five of our Psy waves, but never could hurt us. Kakuna is second, and although we only used four Psy waves on him, he did poison us, so we're losing health fast. Scyther is last, and he's trying to build Fairy Cutter like usual, so I confused him so that he'd hit himself so that he can't build power, and started using Psy Wave. I was absolutely shocked when, after some nice confusion luck, I ended up hitting two strong Psy Waves and got the win. Rival time, right away I confused Ghastly with Confuse Ray, and with some great luck, he hit himself twice, so we never got hit. Zubat is second, and it actually hits a super effective bite, but it hardly did anything. We got confused and hit ourselves though, so our health was about half when we took him out. Last is Quilava, and although my Psy Waves were really weak at the start, he was also hitting himself in confusion. Things got bad when we finally got hit and it burned us, but our next Psy Wave finally got a good roll and took him out. With that done, I started hunting down tons of trainers around Goldenrod. It was a massive pain considering that we still do random damage, miss a lot, and don't have many power points, but that's exactly why I'm doing this. At level 27, we learn our only normal attacking move by level up, Psybeam. After that, I'm confident that I can beat Whitney's normal gem. Finally, we hit level 27 after taking out every last trainer in the area, learn Psybeam, and go to Whitney. 40 seconds after I start the fight, it's over. I didn't think I'd beat her that badly. I decided that I need more levels before I could take on Morty's Ghost Gem, so I went ahead and fought the Kimono Girls for the Surf HM. I couldn't beat all of them though, since one of them uses Umbreon and psychic moves don't work on dark types. I'll have to come back here after I get the Shadow Ball TM from Morty. I did well in the Trainers in the Ghost Gym, so I decided to try Morty himself. It actually goes incredibly well. His Gengar hit us really hard with Shadow Ball, but either than that, we swept him. Right after the fight, I replaced Spite with Shadow Ball, so we finally have our same type attack bonus move. 
It's a shame that Ghost is always physical until Gen 4, though. Thanks to getting Shadow Ball, we can now beat the trainer with the Umbreon and get ourselves the Surf HM. I go right to the lighthouse to start on the quest that unlocks the Steel Gym. I know that I'm not ready for it, but I'll need levels from the trainers in the lighthouse itself. After that, I go to Cyanwood and go to the Fighting Gym. As you'd expect, we make pretty short work of him. We're a Ghost using a Psychic move in a Fighting Gym. We have a pretty big advantage. The Steel Gym is the next one, though, and we clearly can't win yet. Maybe the Ice Gym will go better. First, though, I have to do the Team Rocket hideout. That's perfectly fine. They love using Poison and Psychic types in here, both of which are pretty easy to fight with Psybeam and Shadow Ball. Afterwards, the Ice Gym was an easy victory. You'd think the Seventh Gym would have put up more of a fight, but he hardly even attacked us. After that, I decide to give the Steel Gym just one more try, just in case. Right off the bat, both of our Magnemites went down easily, because I got lucky with Thunder Wave not working. Effect moves in Gen 2 have a built-in chance to miss when the AI is doing them. Steelix is last, and right away he hits Iron Tail for a third of our health. Our Shadow Ball doesn't do much at all. It doesn't take long before we're hit with another Iron Tail. One more and we go down. On the next round, Steelix hits himself again, but Jasmine uses a Hyper Potion. I decide to switch to Psybeam to take advantage of Steelix's lowered special defense, and thanks to one lucky miss on an Iron Tail, we were actually able to win the fight. Radio Tower is extra easy this time, since it's almost all poison types, but we still do have to deal with our rival. Golbat was a one-shot with Psybeam, but Sneasel's next. It's part dark type, so Psybeam isn't gonna work, so I confused it instead. It took a couple of Shadow Balls, but we hardly got hurt in the end. Magnemite was an issue because it quickly paralyzed us, but we lucked out and we took it out pretty fast. Haunter set a curse, but we one-shot him, and last is Quilava, who we thankfully one-shot, so the curse wasn't able to take us out. After we're done, I go ahead and grab the spell tag in Blackthorn City since it's Saturday. Holding this will give Weird Ghastly 10% more power with ghost moves. When I get to the Dragon Gym, it pays off big. We're just hardly able to one-shot the Dragonairs, and we beat Kingdra too fast for it to be able to take us out. Honestly, if we were a couple levels lower or didn't have the spell tag, those Dragonairs probably would have held on long enough to paralyze me, and I probably wouldn't be able to win the fight. It looks dominant, but we won this by a hair. Before we can get to the Elite Four, though, we have to deal with our rival one last time, but honestly, we have such an easy time with him that it's not worth recapping. Even with him paralyzing me, we never missed a move, so we were never really in danger. So, we're at level 60 right now. Let's take a look at our stats. Our stats really aren't that bad, and I like that our attack is higher than I anticipated since our Shadow Ball uses attack. I don't see ourselves winning like this, though. I just don't see a Mischievous at level 60 being strong enough to beat three Dragonites that are level 47 to 50. In fact, I don't even think we'll get to Lance, because Dark Train are Karen in the Elite Four, so I decide to grind just a bit. It's been a long time since I had to grind on a wild Pokemon in this run. I'm honestly doing this run because it's a reasonably fast one, so I'm using it in the making of my series, How I Make Pokemon Challenge Videos, where I teach you exactly how I make these videos from start to finish. If you're interested, there's a link to that playlist in the card on screen as well as in the description. Anyway, after a short grind, we're at level 65, and I think this is good enough that that I can at least make a reasonable attempt to beat the Elite Four. Make your final guesses on if we can win or not. Let's do this. First is Psychic Trainer Will. We totally swept him with Shadow Ball, though he was no real issue. Second is Poison Trainer Koga. His only Pokemon that gave us some trouble was Fortress, but because he hardly fought back, we really had no serious issue taking him down. He was just tanky enough to survive a lot of hits, but he's not actually dangerous enough to take us out. Third is Fighting Trainer Bruno, he was basically a sweep with Psybeam, as I'm sure you would have guessed. Fighting type Pokemon tend to have a pretty hard time even hitting ghosts. Fourth is Dark Trainer Karen, the dangerous one. Umbreon took huge damage off Shadow Ball, but things went downhill fast when I hit myself in confusion, and then got hit by Sand Attack before I took it out. Murkrow is next, but it just tried to use Whirlwind, so it never hit us. I confused Houndoom as it came out, but it bit us hard with Crunch. I got incredibly lucky critting it with Shadow Ball for a one-shot, since I probably wouldn't have survived another Crunch. Vile Plume was next, and it hung on with a sliver from Psybeam, but its Stun Spore missed, and we finally finished it off. Last was Gengar, and this is when things got scary. Psybeam missed due to Sand Attack twice in a row, and we got hit by Lick and had a curse put on us. I'm just happy that my third attempt hit, because if we had to do this fight again, I'd probably get stuck on Houndoom. 
Finally, Pokemon Champion Lance, and this one took tons of tries thanks to getting paralyzed. Our opener on this run was incredibly strong, one-shotting Gyarados with a crit. As his first Dragonite came out, his Thunder Wave failed, and we took him down in two hits. I lost many attempts to getting paralyzed by that. A second Dragonite is out next, but this time we crit it with yet another Shadow Ball for a one-shot. Aerodactyl went down in one Shadow Ball, and Charizard is next. He hung on from Shadow Ball with his Sliver, does surprisingly little damage to us with Flamethrower, then we take him out. Last is the final Dragonite, but for whatever baffling reason, he uses Safeguard, so we do big damage. He uses a full Restore, then we just hit two Shadow Balls in a row for a really weirdly easy Pokemon Champion battle. With that done, we're in the Hall of Fame and we win the run, but that doesn't mean the video is done yet. Lance was a weird fight. Took me a lot of tries, but the winning fight ended up being pretty easy. If we beat Lance at that low of a level though, I think we stand a pretty solid chance against Red, the secret hardest boss in the game. To get to him, we have to fight our way through all of Kanto. Seven of the eight gym leaders here are incredibly easy though, since they are not stronger than the Elite Four. In fact, they are much weaker than the Elite Four, so we only have two real fights left in the game. Kanto's new 8th gym leader, Blue, and the secret final boss, Red. Before that though, we go to Mr. Psychic's house to get the TM for Psychic to replace Psybeam. Yes, he is actually called Mr. Psychic. Time for Blue, he starts with Pidgeot. Psychic hits it hard, he uses Mirror Move to hardly hurt me back, and we finish him off. Rhydon went all the way to red health off Psychic and set up a Sandstorm, so we're going to start taking damage over time. I finish him off and Gyarados is next, but he ended up using Rain Dance. I think that actually helped me more than it helped him, since he was a two-shot. RK9 is out in the pouring rain, so I hit Shadow Ball, and for whatever reason he just used Roar? It failed, of course, and then I took him out. Executor is fifth, but he's part psychic, so one Shadow Ball really took him out, and last is Alakazam, so naturally we just one-shot him a Shadow Ball as well. Man, Blue really picked the worst moves he could have for most of that battle. That should have been much harder. With that done, all that's left is Red. I really doubt we stand a chance at this level because I think Snorlax will heal faster than we hurt him, but I'm at least willing to give it a try. Red time. Pikachu was a one-shot with Shadow Ball, and second is Snorlax. Instantly, he's using Amnesia to make his special defense way too high to overcome, and he just spams rest to stay healthy. He can't hit us, so he's just trying to make us run out of power points. I try bypassing his special defense by using Psy Wave again, but it's still just such an unreliable move that it's just not working. Shadow Ball can't hit either since Snorlax is normal type, so I have to try again and again and just hope to get Confusion to stop his Amnesia and his rest. I tried a few more times, but even when I can hold him off of using Amnesia for a few rounds, Psychic does so little damage that it's just not possible. I will literally run out of power points and lose from recoil damage off struggle before I can knock him out. I'm gonna have to grind. I try again at level 84, and it's still just not happening. Psychic still does almost nothing, and Snorlax is just stalling me. Because he can't actually attack us, all he can use is rest and amnesia, making him almost impossible to make faint. Even if I had a critical hit with Psychic, I think I would only do about half his health and damage, then he'd just rest again. I would need two crits in a row to win at this level, and it would probably have to happen while he was asleep. That is just way too lucky, so I have to level up. At level 89, I try a few more times. Finally, we get this solid attempt where Snorlax hits himself in confusion right away and we hit Psychic, but he followed up with Amnesia. I decided to switch to Psy Wave for decent damage, and he hit himself again. He's clearly trying to get rest in, but can't get it because of confusion. I hit yet another Psy Wave while he's in red health, he lands on only a sliver, and I lucked out. He hit himself in confusion to finish himself off. That's exactly what we needed. Venusaur's part poison, so I bring it to red health off Psychic, and he just sets up a sunny day so we take him out. Charizard is next, and the sun is strong, but Shadow Ball hits hard. Flamethrower took us all the way down to almost half health in one shot, so it's a good thing that we were able to finish him off. Blastoise is next, and for whatever reason, instead of hitting me, he changed the sunny day into rain, and then went down. Last is Espeon, but it's part Psychic-type, so I just one-shot it with Shadow Ball, winning the last fight in the game. 
That one really surprised me. With how quickly I managed to get through large chunks of that run, I was really starting to wonder if the challenge was just too easy. But Snorlax was a really interesting obstacle. We've never had that before. A guy who can't hurt us, but is successfully stalling us out so bad that we can't beat him. I really hope that you guys liked that run. I'm thinking for next Saturday's Pokemon challenge, I'm going to do the Gen 4 Gibble Platinum run. Since it always gets asked for in the premiere chats, I don't know if I'll have it done on time because I've started it and it's really, really hard, but I'm gonna try my best for you guys. I'm always looking for your suggestions in the comments and on Twitter though. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you wanna see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also check out the playlist in the description if you'd like to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys wanna see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend What a Geek and I are doing a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. We actually just finished that, so the last few episodes are going up. You can also watch myself, What a Geek, and Goosip playing Pokemon Stadium here on my channel. You guys have been leaving really positive comments on that, and I appreciate it. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. In fact, right after these premiere, I often go live. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.